guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Christine. I'm a rising sophomore at Harvard College, prospective concentrator in neuroscience, potentially declining a secondary, but we'll probably talk about that in the future. So I actually wanted to do a sort of back to school series where I just talk about all sorts of things that could potentially help you with this coming school year. I'm really excited about this. I wanna address a lot of the things that you guys have been asking me for ages, starting with this video. So as you can probably tell by the title, in this video I'm going to be talking all about my favorite note-taking and studying methods and tips. And I've mostly pulled all of this from methods that I've used from this past school year, so my freshman year in college. I try to also generalize it, but the reality is the way that I study differs with every class and honestly sometimes from test to test but i did try to summarize it uh, as best as i could into my top three favorite note-taking methods and then my top three favorite studying methods so hopefully this helps and yeah let's just jump right in So first to address the note-taking method that I use for Math 19A, which is modeling and differential equations for the life sciences. I have it written here. And this was basically an applied math class for life sciences. So we talked a lot about um, like biological models. We read a lot of research papers. It was actually a very interesting class. And I also really loved the studying method that I adapted for it. So for this first studying method, the one that I used for Math 19A is rewriting your notes. So this is the notebook that I used for this class. This is a Moleskin notebook. And essentially what I did was write the notes while the professor was teaching in class, during lecture, very messily uh, using a pencil. And I didn't really care how they looked like at all. It honestly looked like a pigsty. And so just to give you an idea, this is what it looks like. So it's very, very messy. My handwriting is almost illegible, but luckily I can read it. And I didn't restrict myself with how many pages I needed. It was all about making sure I covered everything that the professor was going over while uh, he was writing on the blackboard. And I used those later on because what I would do is after the class, I would rewrite the notes that I took to be really pretty and neat with color schemes and pen, and I tried to limit it to one page, mainly to try to challenge myself to condense the notes to make sure that I'm saving space, actually understanding what I had written in class that day, that I'm understanding the concepts, and that I can summarize it in a way that makes sense to me, and that ensures that I actually did absorb what the teacher was trying to teach. For example, the notes that I just showed you that were really messy with like pencil, they would look like this after I rewrote it. So you can see that it's very condensed, but it is exactly what I wrote down in pencil. And then what I would also do is I would use the printed lecture notes that the teacher provided. So that way, when I had the notes I had taken from class and the notes that he had posted on the class website ahead of time, the notes that I have written in the end on this one sheet of paper are essentially everything that I really, really needed to know for that particular lecture. And I made a habit of doing this for every single class. So sometimes it did feel a little time consuming, but once the test rolled around, I knew that it was worth it in the long run because I had the lectures all ready to go, summarized, easy for me to look over and study from. And that goes with one of my studying methods that I will talk about a little bit later. But yeah, rewriting my notes. This is one of my favorite ones. Then for my second note-taking method, this relates to Psych 1, which is the Introduction to Psychological Science class at Harvard. And for this, I mostly relied on textbook notes. This is a class that I really regret the way that I approached studying for because I did not dedicate as much time as I should have. It was my first psych class that I've ever taken and I didn't realize how time consuming it would be and I just didn't dedicate as much as I should have to this class, both in effort and in time. And that was certainly my fault, but I still wanted to share this note-taking method regardless because I can tell that with proper time management, it would be a lot more effective. So what I did was just taking straight notes from the textbook because the textbook was really, really important for the class um, and especially for the tests because the tests relied a lot on what was covered both in lecture and the textbook. One of those really weirdly specific tests that really challenged the students to cover everything and really look over everything that's provided in terms of course material. So for this one, I really went wild in terms of making it look aesthetically pleasing with color coding and really neat and nice layouts and little sketches and whatnot. So this is one of those classes that, like I said, I definitely could have been a lot more functional with, I think, and just dedicating my time to actually reviewing these notes but I feel like if I were to for example take another psych class maybe if this is one of those classes if there's a 
like part one and part two it'll help to do these kinds of notes because it's really really easy to look back on and it condenses it in such a way that obviously you will understand because you're the one who made these notes so it helped to see all the concepts and definitions that i found to be the most important while studying and it's one of those methods that allows you to really customize your notes make sure that you're looking at only what you should be looking at like i said it's not my favorite note-taking method, but if it's one of those things that you can use them in the long run, because I know I'm going to be taking a lot more neuroscience classes that will likely be based on the concepts in this psych class, at least I was investing in the material and making it really accessible for the future Christine when I'm taking other related courses. So that was taking notes from the textbook, and then my third and final note-taking method is typing. Just typing up your notes. So this is something I did a lot for my life sciences classes. These were the ones that had a lot of students. It wasn't really as intimate as like my math class, which had only like 30, 40 students. So this is the one with hundreds of students. So I had to really make sure I was keeping up. So I found that typing up my notes was the most effective for this. So what I would do is I would have my laptop open and I'm going to be showing you this on my iPad just cause it's easier to face the screen. But I would do this on my laptop where I would have on one side of the screen is the PowerPoint lecture notes that the professor posts that week or the day before or the day of with the other side being the google doc that i'm typing on again speed is really important in these big lecture classes because you can't exactly ask them to go back but what you can do is you can scroll through the lecture notes on your own if you do feel like you're lagging behind take notes as quickly as you need to and then catch up with where the professor is it helps a lot with making sure you're able to go at your own pace slightly while still keeping up with what the teacher is saying so just to show you i would just title it like the lecture number and then the date and then I just took notes on what the teacher was saying. Just really basic notes that are understandable to me. I would take screenshots also. So I would do that from the lecture notes and actually copy and paste that into my own lecture notes on my Google Doc. It helps to make it really customizable while still understanding what my notes are referring to. I found this to be really, really, really helpful because when I look back at my notes, it's usually comprehensive enough where I don't have to rely too much on the lecture PowerPoints later on when I'm setting for tests. So I would also like leave comments on my notes if I wanted to say something additional about certain concepts and then I'd also go back and highlight um, in various colors those highlighted concepts usually come from me taking practice tests from doing homework assignments where these particular ideas came up and I didn't remember them or I didn't fully understand them so when I'm studying for the actual test I know to pay extra attention to those lecture notes these really became like a guide for me going through the course with the homework assignments with the lab assignments with studying for quizzes with studying for tests i would always come back to my own lecture notes because i know that as i keep modifying them adding new notes underneath adding comments that's something that was really important for me in terms of having type notes for these classes because they're easy to modify versus like the really pretty notes that i had in math and they basically look like mini study guides that i made for myself so that i could understand them for when I'm preparing for the test. I think this is one of those methods that a lot of people use and for good reason because the accessibility and the ease with which you can modify your notes makes them really effective studying tools for later on when you're studying for the bigger exam. So that's it for my note taking methods and now for my study tips i broke them down into three main tips so the first tip is to study while you're taking notes and this mostly applies for rewriting your notes the method like with my math class i talked about this already but just to elaborate when you're rewriting them you want to make sure that you're actually understanding what you are looking over what you're condensing reviewing the concepts while you're rewriting them so for me this was all about rereading the notes relearning them and then rewriting them so this process in and of itself was almost like killing two birds with one stone rewriting my notes to make them a lot prettier and then also relearning the material to make sure that i didn't just hear what the teacher was saying in lecture and then throw it away the second i left the class so that goes into my second study tip which is to reread and redo the lesson which is kind of similar to notes but the lessons themselves are really important to review and the reason for this is because the lecture notes that your teacher puts together for you to summarize what you're going to be learning in a certain lecture 
they put them together for a reason. Every single concept that's written down, every single note, every single practice problem, they're usually the ones that are most related to what's going to be covered on the actual test. Because if you're making sure that you're understanding what you learned in the lecture the first time around, then it'll make it easier to apply that knowledge to the more complex questions in the exam. So just as an example, this is for lecture four of my math class. I went through the lecture four notes and literally redid the practice problem it's really easy to do this as a study method because you can just go straight through the lectures from like for example 1 to 20 if that's what the exam is covering and it just makes for a really easy step-by-step -step studying schedule if you're at a loss for how to go about reviewing the material if you have the lectures broken down then you can just literally go in chronological order and then finally practice tests so I did this a lot for my life sciences classes because they always had the practice problems and exams and also for math professors really Really like to post practice exams from previous years so it's really important even if you can't take the practice exams as if you were in the actual testing situation even if it's just skimming the questions and then skimming the answer key professors like to write their tests in certain ways they like to phrase their questions in certain ways they like to use certain types of problems so if you're able to familiarize yourself with that with uh, what they did in previous years, then it helps you feel a little bit more prepared for what your test might look like. And they usually post those for a reason, so you might as well at least look at it if you can. For example, practice midterm, even if it's really sloppily, like write down my work. For example, number six, I clearly had no idea how to do, but I still tried. But the main idea is when you're going over your answers using the midterm answer key, look at how that was graded, look at how the answers were written, make sure that you understand those types of problems, correcting yourself so that once you get to the actual testing situation, you'll feel really prepared if you come across a similar problem, you can just address it with ease. So those are my main note-taking tips and studying methods. I really hope that this video helped. It was really highly requested. If you have any questions about anything that I've mentioned, comment them down below. I'll try to elaborate if I can. If you have your own tips, if you're in college, please leave them down below. I think it'll be really cool if we can create a little space here where we can just share tips and trade ideas for how to make sure that we're studying as effectively as possible. So that's it for this first video of my back to school series. Series. Be sure to stay tuned for future videos. If you have any suggestions for what I could post in this series, also comment that down below. Be sure to go check out my Instagram. I'll leave the handle somewhere on the screen here. I post on there a lot more. I'm a lot more active there and you can see what I'm up to on a day-to-day -day basis. And as a final little like tidbit, I love to make my notes very pretty and neat and visually appealing. I love to look at study Instagrammers. They often have the most aesthetically pleasing feeds. So I'll leave a couple of those creators down below. Be sure to check them out because it honestly is so so inspiring to see their beautiful notes and one last note the music in this video was produced by demon gummies an amazing lo-fi hip-hop music creator i've been using their music in the past few videos of mine and i really think you should go check out their channel so that'll be linked down below and yeah that's pretty much it for today's video i hope you guys are doing well and i will see you very very soon bye